Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you had a good night's rest. Um, yeah. I see there's some people still joining. So welcome, 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 everyone. Okay, so today we are going to continue with revision. Um, I think most of the work was covered. So it will be a combination of looking at all the exam papers and maybe one or two new things to think about. So if everyone is ready, we go to the check-in question. The check-in question I have for you today, and you can either type it to everyone or you can just send it to me individually, is what is keeping you up at night? And when we ask that question, it refers to what stresses you out most at the moment? What are you really stressed about? What do you wake up at night and you go, oh goodness. So please send us some, some um, ideas of what is happening in your head and body at the moment. What is keeping you up at night? Come on, I'm not getting anything. You can either just send it to me as well if you don't want to send it to everyone on the chat. What is your biggest stress in your life at the moment? Ah, uh, yeah. So the fact that Corona is kind of messed up the final year and that... There's no metric dance. Oh, yeah. No metric dance. Okay. What else? Will there be a, a metric dance maybe later or next year? What are the schools doing with metric dances? The fear of repeating metric and feeling like a failure. Yes, the, fe the fear that you have to repeat again. School doesn't do anything, doesn't send work or anything. Oh, that's not good. So the schools are not supporting you. At least you've got the STEM lockdown digital school for some help. What are they doing with the dancers? Will they, will they do it at some other point? Uh, metric dinner only, okay. Do you guys know when you will be writing your exams yet? Do you have any dates for prelim or finals? What about next year? What about after school? Any concerns about after school? Let's say you finish with all distinctions this year what is the plan for next year or are you not thinking about that yet Okay, so much I could think about. Tell us more. Please share your thoughts and participate here on the chat. Um, it's, it's not ideal. I would love to see you. But it will do for now. Okay, so trying to continue studies, working hard this year. That's a good one. It's just focusing on this year and, and trying to, to still do your best and still get through for next year. Still make it. Okay, so this is a very important question to ask yourself because if every night you wake up in cold sweat or you struggle to fall asleep because your mind is racing, your mind is too busy, figure out why because it is 
much easier to solve something or to address something if you know what the real problem is. So this question is actually a very powerful one that maybe you can do every day and also when you check in with your friends. Oh, so the so it was cancelled altogether. Oh, guys, I think it's so sad. I, I really feel so bad for you. I saw some American schools did an Instagram prom night. They call them a trick dance, a prom night. Um, and, <laughs> and then people were dressed up and real music happening. But yeah, it's still not the same. Still not the same. So we need to think about creative ways of how we can solve this, right? Okay, so what I realized last night is revision is not taught, you do revision. So this class might be a little bit different than what you used to with the same lockdown school where there's a teacher talking, talking, talking a lot and you can just sit and type. That's going to change now. So this question that you see on my screen, question five, it came from the 2016 um, exam paper. Um, sorry, I just want to check. This is the one I wanted to go to. The one we did yesterday, the 2019 exam paper. So question two, we're talking about opportunities of entrepreneurship to counteract unemployment. Do you remember us doing that? <laughs> We're still talking about metric farewells. Okay, guys, let's get back to entrepreneurship. Maybe we can think of creative ways to, to, um, to have a metric dance. Maybe there's a business opportunity for someone. Okay, so let's get back to entrepreneurship. So I know it's a bit blurry, but I'm sure you can see it. The question we did yesterday is around entrepreneurship. And it was workshops were hosted across the provinces recently to inspire social entrepreneurship among the youth as a viable option to counteract unemployment. They received training and information about the changing world of work how to identify their talents and build the characteristics that may be required to enter the job market. What are the important words to consider when you answer this? Social entrepreneurship, changing, sorry for the double G there, changing world of work, the answer or the question around motivate, and then remember your definitions. So why is motivate in there? Motivate is in there because you don't only say that was at question, uh, where was that? That was at uh, question 2.4. So suggest so two ways in which you could use social media as a platform and motivate each answer. Don't forget that part. Okay, and how do you, if you're not sure how much you should write, look at the marks. So when they tell you, they want one plus one. It means two things, right? Two examples, two definitions, two things. When they say it's two times two, it means they want two things plus an explanation of those two things. So you need to write more. It's not just one-liners. So this is what we're going to do now. I'm going to give you 10 minutes to answer this question. Question two. It's a total of 15 points and I'm going to be quiet now for 10 minutes for you to answer this question. Any questions on the question, not what the answers are, but any question on this question. I want us to practice answering exam papers a bit today. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, then if you, there's no questions, then please grab a pen and paper and I'm going to start the stopwatch. And then for 10 minutes, we will spend time on answering this question.
So no, you don't have to send the answers in the chat. Um, we will do feedback um, when everyone's done. Okay, so you've got five minutes left. We're halfway through with the time. Please make sure you do this because I will be randomly calling upon you to answer it.
Okay, so you've got two minutes left. Please wrap up what you're busy with and then we will start with feedback. Alrighty, how was that one? Easier to do the yesterday than yesterday when you saw it for the first time? You guys still there? Can I get an indication if you're still there or I'm talking into the World Wide Web? <laughs> okay, wonderful, one person there. <laughs> All right, so I want you to, let's, let's do it like this, 2.1. Kyle, since, since you said 2.1, Kyle Zeet, are you ready to answer 2.1? Can you give us a very short answer to what you wrote there? Okay, so I think, um, Harry, can you unmute Kyle Zeet? Then he can speak. It's easier than typing. You don't want to talk. Okay, do you want to write? <laughs> Anyone else wants to volunteer to answer 2.1? Ways we can promote social entrepreneurship. Uh, Hadi, I, I hear you. We will hear what um, so can we, let's go to Lissedi. Lissedi, are you ready to answer 2.1 for us? Um. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Nav, can you hear me? Yes. Um, <clears throat> three ways in which we can promote um okay ma'am honestly i don't have an answer for 2.1 but i have an answer for 2.2 okay so then then um then go 2.2 we'll get back to 2.1 one financial challenge young entrepreneurs may encounter and how they can deal with it so you need to write two things right so what would be the answer there okay for 2.2, I wrote one financial challenge would be finding finding investors, finding people who can invest in your business. Yes. And how can you deal with that? Um, Part-time part -time job to start with in order to save up cash to fund your own business. That's a great idea. Wonderful. Thank you very much. If 
I marked your paper, I would have given you two marks. Okay, so 2.1, there was someone typing by giving students proposed real life problems and make them work on it. Yes, so case studies is a way schools can help promote social entrepreneurship. So remember now, the key here is social entrepreneurship, right? Not just starting businesses. Okay, so um, another one came through. Schools could ask guest speakers to talk to us about what they do as, entrep as entrepreneurs. Yes, so learning from role models, connecting them with current entrepreneurs. Yes, I'm still missing the, the thing around social entrepreneurship. Remember yesterday we talked a bit about how that's different. So social entrepreneurship is not just about profitability. It's also about how do we help communities um, with the profit we make. So it's a bit of a different focus. Can I see a, a suggestion that schools can do to promote social entrepreneurship, um, social, especially social entrepreneurship, not nor I'm saying normal, both of them are normal, but the usual entrepreneurship, the traditional definition. What do you think? Um, okay, so, so that's homework, right? 2.1 is homework. Tomorrow, first question, we'll check in and say, what can schools do three ways to promote social entrepreneurship? Let's go to 2.3. Discuss how becoming an entrepreneur could be used as an opportunity to empower young people. So Mason, would you mind answering that one for us? Then we can unmute you. 2.3, Mason, if you can. Are you still here? <laughs> Mason, you're unmuted. Please speak up. I think it's, it's still muted. Um, don't let me talk. Okay. <laughs> oh, guys, what do you do in real classrooms? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so then please type. Type then. What? 2.3, the answer. Discuss how becoming an entrepreneur could be used as an opportunity to empower young people. You talk to each other. So why do you not want to talk to me? It is a bit strange. Teacher, Will is willing to give us the answer. Please, Will, tell us. 2.3. And if you like talking, you can do 2.4 and 5 as well. So let's start with 2.3. Uh, for 2.3, I think um, when you are... Wait, I think when you are an entrepreneur, you it enables you to give a... Uh, the necessary skills to people, which in turn may give skills to other people who are willing to become entrepreneurs. Perfect. So, so remember that is a perfect answer. But they want two of they want one suggestion of what you can do, and then an explanation. So, give me a little bit more. So, it's upskilling, and what would upskilling yeah. mean? What impact will upskilling have in a community? Uh, they'll be able to provide for their needs. Yes, so it, so your answer will be you can upskill, perfect. And the reason why upskilling is needed in community is to lift people out of poverty or to create other opportunities or to empower so that they can create businesses. Wonderful, thank you very much. 2.4, Will, can we stay with you? Do you have an answer for 2.4? Yeah. Please. Okay. Uh, for the benefits of social media. Yes. It immediately represents your skills, knowledge, attributes to prospective companies. Okay, and how will you do that? I think like um, maybe um, maybe post uh, videos of, of how you, you would do in a company. Okay, TikTok videos. Yes. Or LinkedIn. <laughs> Maybe not. TikTok has not been found to be a very reliable source with, with employers. But okay, that mm -hmm. is a platform to use. So 
So that's one. Great. So they say select two, you gave one and you motivated it. What would be your second way to use social media as a platform to promote your, your chances of getting a job? <clears throat> it makes you more approachable to prospective uh, employers since uh, men, since and let me just say it makes you more approachable to many prospective employers. Okay, and how would you do it? Remember yesterday we talked about having your CV um, on online platforms. So having a good CV is very important. And then that you can share on the different platforms. So the two things then would be, one is having um, posting videos of your skills or presentation, depending on the kind of job you want on social media, and that would make you attractive, or that would make you visible for prospective employers. And the second one is having a good CV and then publishing it on platforms like LinkedIn or Career24. Um, so yeah, that's that was the answers of yesterday. Perfect, thank you very much. And then the last one, 2.5.1, 2.5.2. Well, if you if you're willing to continue, otherwise we can ask someone else. No, it's fine. Perfect, thank you. So, what is why is passion important for a young worker? And here I want you to think about first give the definition of passion, and then you say why. I think for passion, you have a love for something, and you honor it. Okay. And then why is that important? Uh, you would know what you want. You see more of what you do in your job than just doing it for money. Excellent. Excellent answer. Okay. Creativity. What is creativity? Why is it important? Bring, I think for creativity is to bring innovative ideas. Okay. And why is that important for an organization? I think when it times when it comes to times of crisis, you might uh, think of innovative ideas to solve problems. Okay, that is great. So companies always want someone to help them think out of the box. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So two point one, guys. That's that's in your homework for tomorrow. Okay, three ways we schools can promote social entrepreneurship. So can we just? I know you can't clap, but give an applause to everyone who gave answers. You are brave. I thank you. The next one I want to go on to, and we've got 15 minutes, is something I think that is important for you to think about. So I'm not saying it's going to be in the exam paper. I'm just saying maybe this is one we can talk about. Okay, because now we're going away from entrepreneurship. Well, it's part of entrepreneurship, but it talks about fraud and illegal cigarettes in the do you guys have the via africa life orientation book for grade 12s have you seen these pictures before in your textbooks i'm not sure which because i i assume different schools use different books okay all right so this is an example of an activity that they suggest for Great twelves, and it touches on, um, on. Okay, the focus book. I will go have a look at what is in there. I use focus. I'll, oh, okay. So it talks about corruption. Do you guys know about the cigarette ban that is currently in South Africa because of COVID lockdown? You know, people are not allowed to buy, to sell cigarettes. Okay, so I'm, yes, <laughs> torture my dad <laughs> because he smokes a lot. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard for a lot of people. Okay, so here's the, the case study I want you to think about. And I'm going to give you five minutes for those three questions. So let me give you some background. They stopped the sale of tobacco products. And then the Fair Trade Independent Tobacco Association paid it to court. Okay, saying that there's no reason why for COVID related, they need to ban cigarettes. And if they are, what are they? 
what is the reason and then a lot of people said it's it's um there's some corruption there's some dodgy things going on for this reason um and they also say that the head of source is surname is Kiesvetter, says that government lost 300 million rand in taxes through the ban in april alone okay and then the question came up as to what does this mean for the black market so when we talk about black market it is people illegally selling cigarettes so they get them from wherever they get them from and they don't pay taxes on them um you're not sure about the ingredients in the cigarettes um and it's kind of a underground business selling cigarettes so do you think that that is a form of entrepreneurship if you are selling cigarettes now in south africa tobacco products or do you think this is um, illegal just type quickly on the chat is this illegal or is it a creative way of entrepreneurship? Okay, I think everyone's a bit skeptical. Aha, uh -huh. so someone's saying it's, it's not because there's an opening in the market and it's too illegal. Okay, yes. So because they're not officially and legally selling cigarettes, people is not going to stop smoking. They just look for it in other places. So I want you to talk or to think about this. One, do you think cigarette ban opened opportunity for the black market? Two, what is the tax implications? And three, what is the health implications of black market cigarettes? So that would be three questions. I'm again going to give you six minutes. It's two minutes per question. Think about those three questions. So you guys are raising some really good points on the chat. I think the question is, why is this bad? Why is it bad for the black market if there's no, or why is it bad for the country if there's a black market created by ban banning cigarettes? Yes, so there's no tax. Okay, that's a good point, yeah. What are the tax implications? So what does it mean for South Africa? This guy said South Africa lost 300 million rand in taxes in one month because that's what the, the tobacco industry um, pay taxes in a month. That's a lot of money. What does that mean for South Africa if we lose 300 million rand in taxes through in, in April? What does it matter whether tax, whether source gets 300 million rand or not? Okay, so that's the health implication, yes. The health implication is they're not made by companies that's illegal so you don't really know what you're smoking or do you do you know the brand do you know what's in the brand okay that could be a health implication okay so a good answer if there's ban of tobacco products then there's a loss of uh, i mean a loss of taxes it also will mean a loss of money for the country 
this is a very good case study. Um, I think you you can, if I'm correct, you can download the slides afterwards or or look at the um, the presentation on on YouTube. And I would suggest going through this. Um, it is it's a long one, so doing it in a class of forty five minutes doesn't really add value, I think, or will give you the most from it. But go and read through this activity six. It comes from Snaplify. Snaplify made um, school books freely available until December. So it's a wonderful, wonderful app. I would really suggest you go and get, have a look at Snaplify, um, I think, .co.za.com. So just Google it, Snaplify. And then you can download um, the textbooks and use them for free until December when the license expires. So it's good extra um, activities in preparation for your exam. Okay, so, so this is a good case study looking at entrepreneurship, looking at corruption um, that, that I would suggest you, you do. They got, in 2007, they got a lot of cigarettes at Bait Bridge at the border and they took them away and they burned them. So then they ask you these, 12, these 11 questions to think about. And it might come up this year because of this scenario. This was quite a controversial and a big one that was in the news everywhere. Um, so what is the implication of a state of emergency and the rules of that in, in terms of bans? And what does it mean for South Africa? And the businesses that, that um, develop because of it. All right, so another question, and this is from the 2016, again, the quality is bad, it's a quota, not a PDF version. So this is also a question to look at. Um, same concept, they give you a case study and then they ask questions. And you will see, if you look at previous exam papers, Questions kind of repeat themselves. It's a bit different, but at the end of the day, if you know how to answer it and you know the work that you've that you've done through the year, and you are mindful to think about how much they want, right? So it's not just important to get it right, it's also important to write enough to deserve the marks that they've allocated. So the questions here. Define entrepreneurship and give a reason why it could be a financially viable option for an unemployed person. Okay, so one marks one one mark for the definition of entrepreneurship, and then they want a reason, but enough of a reason for you to earn two marks. The other question is three reasons why communities should support local entrepreneurs, and we've seen this right. We've seen this in the other paper, the 2019 paper. Looked a bit different, but it was there. So three reasons, three marks, but enough in those three reasons that you will get two marks each for it. And the last one is, suggest three measures that entrepreneurs can take to succeed in an oversaturated market. What is an oversaturated market? Anyone wants to give it a shot? An oversaturated market means there's a lot of, of um, entrepreneurs, a lot of businesses, okay? Too much, exactly. Too much going on, so the market is flooded. Exactly. Market saturation is a situation in which a product has become diffuse within a market. The actual level of saturation can depend on consumer purchasing power as well as competition process and technology. That is a very comprehensive definition. Was that something you knew or copy and paste from Google? But a good one. So if you can memorize that one, that would really impress the the teacher and the person marking the exams. So market saturation, in short, just means there's too many businesses and not enough clients. Um, and how do we succeed in an oversaturated market? So that's a good question also. So I'm going to leave you with homework, OK? 
okay? Please don't be scared and, and dial off or don't dial in because um, you actually have to think. I think thinking is the best present every teacher can give you because just getting the answers is, it's, you're too clever for that. I, I really think our brains are too clever for, for this way of teaching. So this is the question for tomorrow. Suggest three measures that entrepreneurs can take to succeed in an oversaturated market. Question one, and it's going to be six marks. And the other question we had was state three ways in which schools could promote social entrepreneurship as a viable option to counteract unemployment. Okay. So that is the two questions of homework for tomorrow. If you don't have any questions from me or to me, for me, then that is it for today. Anything you would like to add? Okay, guys, then that is the lesson. I will see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Have a wonderful Tuesday.